Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your Pick a Card reading focusing on interpersonal relationships. Everywhere I go lately, I've been seeing like themes of people reworking how they function inside of relationships. And this isn't just romantic relationships, although there is clearly that, but it's, I think we're all being called to re-examine how we deal with our fellow humans on like a one-to-one -one level. So, you know, your friends, your family, your kids, your parents, your brothers and sisters, acquaintances on the street, all of it seems fitting seeing as this is Aquarius season and we are all trapped inside with our family. <laughs> um, I really wanted to have new decks for this reading. I had actually bought three new decks because um, I was getting kind of tired of, you know, my same old like five decks that I have. And that has proved a little bit impossible because obviously I can't just like go to my local shop and pick up some new ones. And I tried ordering some from Amazon, but they are not shipping non-essential items. So, and then I tried ordering them from a small business and they have been, you know, not able to get shipments out, you know, in the last week or so. So maybe there is some reason that these four decks that I have handy here are meant to be in this reading. So let's go ahead and see what the universe wants you to know about how you function inside of relationships. Okay, pile one, definitely getting a romantic vibe here, but maybe like a sexual relationship vibe is more accurate <laughs> because, uh, so these two cards over here represent you and your energy and how you deal with interpersonal relationships. This card in the middle is the central issue. And as you can see, it is the three of swords, which is all about heartbreak. And these two cards over here are the other person, queen of crystals and ace of crystals. So with you guys being the knight of swords and the seven of cups, you are charging into things you are like leaping before you look it's like you you jump right into relationships without really thinking about it first or you just are so overcome with passion like you see this person you meet them and you're like oh you know i gotta i have to explore that i have to be with them but also with the seven of cups uh i see that there's kind of like a lot of people here and i know i said like like romantic or sexual in the beginning and you know this could be somebody who is like way abusing tinder but it doesn't have to be that way. Maybe I know people who are like this with friends, right? Who just like everybody they meet, they want to be their best friend or they're just like collecting this like great big pool of acquaintances, but then end up feeling that they like don't have any actual close like friends, like soul family. So yeah, like this, <laughs> this Knight of Swords and Seven of Cups energy, I would say is definitely coming up to be transmuted because this is not really serving you. This is kind of your impulse. You, Knight of Swords is so quick moving, always jumping into things. She's literally about to jump off this cliff. Seven of Swords overcome with options, always going, oh, you know, maybe you jumped into a relationship or friendship with somebody and then you think, oh, this is great. But then you're like, oh, look at this other person. I want that. It's like FOMO, relationship FOMO. And it's funny because <laughs> my husband is like this. <laughs> okay, so that's you and yeah, Three of Swords in the middle. Um, I think you know, you don't need me to tell you that this uh, habit, these habits you have of charging into relationships and being like collecting too many relationships is not really working out for you. This this three of swords is it's nothing but heartbreak. I mean, it definitely stems from like you have so much love to give and you feel like you don't feel like you should have to settle down with just one person or be limited or limit your circle of friends because maybe you really love people and you just get such good like vibes about connecting with different people and that's all fantastic but you need to just make sure that you know it's not coming back to bite you in the ass and yeah three of swords we don't we don't want to be <laughs> continuing these patterns if they just end up hurting you uh, over and over again she's holding her heart and so the the other party the other person Queen of Crystals and Ace of Crystals. So I think that you guys are really attracted to people who seem like stable, grounded, um, like feet on the feet in the dirt, 
good at planning, good at making decisions and give you a sense of like stability. This is really funny to me because for like, for me, uh, I am these crystals and the people I have actually been in relationships with tend to be th these type of people. So I'm like on the other end of this same polarity, this same paradigm. So I actually have a pretty good understanding of this because you guys are the type of people that I always end up like enmeshed with. And it's funny because queen of crystal type of person, these, these, these are like steady, almost shy, almost like inhibited type of people talking about myself here, really like people who don't like to take a risk, people who don't like to put themselves out there. We are really attracted to people like you because you're so full of love, so full of life. And you get us like out of our comfort zone and you facilitate adventure. <laughs> like you, you make it easy for us to go out and do the things we wish you could do because we are really attracted to you because you pull us out of our caves, pull up, pull us out of our shells. And you're attracted to us because we kind of bring you back down to earth and bring you, give you a sense of stability that you're kind of lacking in yourself. So this gives us pretty good insight into what the situation is, but it doesn't really tell us um, what you want to do from here. My just like personal advice would be, man, I, you, you guys got to find like the right person. You got to be a little bit more discerning. You don't, you really, really don't want to like water yourself down or like chain yourself down because, you know, your, your, your beautiful, wild and free spirit is so much of what attracts the right people to you and so much of what is beautiful about you. So you don't want to be like destroying your, like your essence, right? You want to keep this, this, this spirit that you have, this passion, but you, I think if you can be a little bit more discerning and resist a little bit more about who who you like exchange energy with, then you can find the the right person or right people. It doesn't have to be one person. You can still have a pool of sexual partners, romantic partners. You know, you can be polyamorous. You can have a big circle of friends, but a little bit more discernment here, I think would go a long way for you. And I mean, you, you already know that but this is, this is just reflecting what you already know. That's why you've manifested this video. <laughs> so yeah, it's so funny because like you guys are a lot like my husband and he went through like 10 years of like going around with all these people, <laughs> you know, and uh, eventually he had to just be like, no, like no more dating, no more looking for the right, you know, no more looking for the one. He just had, he just eventually got sick of it all and was like, you know, he actually eventually like turned down sex after he hadn't, <laughs> hadn't had sex for like a long time. And... <laughs> Which, uh, you know, for a man who is used to getting what he wants when he wants it, that was a real uh, uh, moment of personal growth and triumph for him. And then, lo and behold, I come along and, you know, we are, we are, we are truly twin flames. And, you know, we've been together having the time of our lime ever since. Not that it hasn't been without challenges. But my point is, from my personal experience, if you guys can maybe take a time out, put on the brakes a little bit, then that can actually manifest the person that you want. And believe it or not, there is a person out there for you who can satisfy all of your various desires, who can be your best friend, who can be your lover, who can be your soulmate, who can be your accountant, <laughs> who can help you um, kind of find stability in your life. And you can give so much to them in, in the opposite way. You can take them on adventures. You can run social interference for them at parties. You can get them out of their shell and you guys can really become greater than the sum of your parts. Yeah, that person is out there for you guys. You just need to slow down just a little bit. Don't break your spirit. Slow down just a little bit and use your discernment. And I think you can manifest this person. I'd like to pull just a, just a couple of moon cards for you guys just to see if you get a little bit more advice here. What might be coming your way? Confidence is your key to success. That's so much, that's so much like, like you guys, this Leonine energy. 
Yeah, people are attracted to your confidence the way you aren't afraid to look like to, you know, leap before you look. People are attracted to that. And especially these like grounded type of uh, crystal people, <laughs> like earth energy people are really, really attracted to your, your fiery jump into the game energy. So yeah, don't, don't water yourself selves down, guys. Your passion will bring you to what you want. Your confidence will attract people to you. Just be discerning because it will also attract all kinds of like parasitic people to you who want to suck your energy. You want to get in a relationship with somebody who can, you can be in a uh, symbiotic energetic exchange, right? Just like I was talking about. They can tap into your, your fiery energy and your passion and you can tap into their grounded earth energy and it can be a symbiotic exchange. That is what you want to find. You don't want to find people who are just leeching off of your energy. And you also don't want to find like people who are just like they're only the big, the best thing they can give you is just like stopping you from from doing things. If you're if you're getting with people who are just like dragging you down, you might be confusing like that ball and chain energy with this like grounded st stability energy. So yeah, you want to find like a more optimum mix. You don't want to find like the toxic watered down version of the symbiotic exchange. You want to, you want to get the real thing. You want to find the real thing and don't settle for less guys. Gun for the real thing and don't settle for anything less. You and your loved ones are safe. New moon in cancer. You guys are so much like my husband. This is hilarious. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm just channeling readings for him, <laughs> even though it's supposed to be for, for you guys, but there must be uh, a segment of the people in my energy bandwidth who are actually a lot like him because, you know, he's my twin flame and it makes sense that I'd be resonating with people who are a lot, a lot, lot like him. Um, I, in my experience, people who really are charging ahead all the time, uh, and are full of passion tend to sometimes be doing that because they're masking fear, especially fear for losing their loved ones. Maybe that's why you spread yourself around and kind of collect all these people because then you feel like, oh, um, if I have all these people, then even if I lose some of them, I still have I still have other ones. Or maybe you don't want to get too close to somebody because you're afraid of losing them. So just remember, guys, you, you don't need to be so concerned about this security thing. Yeah, and if you've been you've been worrying new moon of cancer, you've been worrying about your personal security and your security of your loved ones, which is why you're looking for this like queen of pentacles, really like secure type of person. You're looking for security in your interpersonal relationships, which is fine. You know, we, we want to find people we can get this symbiotic energetic exchange with. That's good. But don't let your fear, like make your decisions for you, right? Don't let your fear make your decisions for you. You and your loved ones are safe. And that's what I'm seeing here, guys. Good luck in your interpersonal relationships. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pal two, welcome to your reading. I don't get like a romance or sexual or even so much family vibe from this at all. I think this is more to do maybe with career, but it's more just like your broader network of human interactions. I think you guys are being asked to try something new in the way you are negotiating like the broader social network. Because over here, uh, so these two cards uh, represent you. These two cards represent the other person or the other people. And this page of pentacles in the middle is like the central issue or like the linchpin of all of this. So with the page of pentacles being your central issue. This is definitely, you know, you are being called to embody a new type of energy and a new way of embarking out into the world. And over here, your energy is the wheel and three of pentacles. So the wheel, everything has been, you know, going through its cycles, right? Uh, you've been riding the wheel up and down. So I think this is, this is definitely a moment of it's a pivot point for you. It's a point of change. It's time for things to shift, time to do something new. And here after this is the three of pentacles, 
which is always this card of teamwork, working in groups, uh, collaboration, uh, especially on a work project, but it can be a creative project or even like just like a family, like family project. Um, but it's pooling your energy and your resources and your skills and your knowledge together to create something that you maybe couldn't do alone or that would be incredibly difficult for you to do alone. So if you've been thinking about like looking for help or outsourcing something to do with business or like starting up a band, any, any kind of any group project, it's time to be kind of putting your energies in that direction. And I think you guys have probably been kind of like flying solo in the past. So you might not want to hear group project. I know when I was in university, I like literally would not take a class if the syllabus said that there was going to be a group project in it. I was like, fuck that. Like, I do not, I do not work in groups. I don't need these bastards taking up my time, sucking my energy. So if you guys really, really don't want to hear anything about a group project, uh, I, I get it. <laughs> I, I totally get it. Um, so, I mean, you don't need to be working with people that are really going to be sucking your energy. I wouldn't recommend that at all. Uh, but to see if you can find people that you can work with and you might need to adapt. And <laughs> over here with the other people, I think really for you guys, it's people, not just one person. Five of swords. So yeah, you are not liking this idea of collaborating. <laughs> Skull on the tip of a sword, the conflict, suffering, death. That is how, <laughs> how you feel about having to work in groups. Um, not liking it at all, but moving forward, this is the Knight of Cups over here. So if you can persevere through the, the bullshit, if you can open yourself up to this idea and find a way to work through all of the, the conflict and the pain and like the social anxiety and the having to compromise, having to compromise your vision, even just having to like schedule shit in a group, if you can get through that, it, it's, you know, it's going to suck for a little bit, five of swords, but knight of cups, that's a message of love. And I think it's coming from other people or at least one other person to you, not necessarily romantic love, although it definitely could be. Um, but knight of cups, I actually get that a lot. Like, uh, when I go home, like I'm like an eight hour drive away from my family. Um, so when I drive home on <laughs> the morning, when I drive home, uh, I typically get the knight of cups card because I, and to me, that's my mother. So the knight of cups doesn't have to be doesn't have to be uh, romantic. It can be anybody in your environment who is bringing you good vibes and who really appreciates you being there and who really has nothing but the best intentions for you. So there is people out there. There is people. Did I just say that? <laughs> there are people out there who can really work with you well and can help you bring your project into fruition. You just have to put yourself out there and be willing to work inside of this group dynamic. Be the page of pentacles. Bravely step out into the unknown. Interesting. Yeah, this page of pentacles is hol holding a coin, right? Maybe you guys are in some kind of group project and you might have to front the money for something. Um, that came to mind rather strongly there. You know, maybe you're in a band and, you know, you guys need to you get a rehearsal space or need to buy some equipment and you are the only one who happens to have any spare change or even just a credit card with um, balance free on it so that you could do that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that is a, you know, obviously a risky decision that you will have to think about carefully, but that is indicated here that that's something you might be called to do. Okay. I think we will pull a couple of Lenormand cards for you guys because they match this deck and I really like them. I'm still learning how to read them, but let's see what we get here. These are red in pairs. I'm gonna pull two of them and just, we will see. House. Paired with stork. Okay, so these cards are supposed to be read pretty literally. So the house card means like your literal house, your home, your family, or any kind of like establishment. It could be like a business establishment. Um, and in this case, 
I would stretch this out to include like a project because um, that is, you know, a business, even if it's a creative project. So any kind of thing. And uh, the stork is all about new cycles, new beginnings, something, something new. So put these together and we literally have like a new home or a new project, a new establishment, which sitting right on top of Page of Pentacles and the Three of Pentacles. And I was talking about starting some kind of group project and a house to me that would include, you know, that you don't live in a house by yourself typically, right? If you have a, this big house, you'd be living in there with multiple people. So this is, <laughs> these cards, I, I really like them because they always like confirm like exactly what I just said. It's, it's actually really, really uncanny. Um, like this little deck here almost creeps me out with the specificness, specificness. It is really specific and it creeps me out. <laughs> so yeah, confirmation there to work on your new project, your new home, your new establishment. And I think that's what I'm seeing here, guys. Good luck on your new endeavors. Hope to see you again soon. Okay, pile three, welcome to your reading. You guys are, the first word that comes to mind is overzealous, which isn't really a bad thing. I mean, it's a good thing. You guys I see are doing really well. Over here you got, these two cards represent you, your energy. These two cards represent the other person or the other people. And this four of swords in the middle is the central issue. So you guys being six of wands, which is victory, triumph, success, all of those good things and Knight of Cups. I think you're coming from a period where you've finally gotten your shit together and everything is suddenly going well for you and you're feeling pretty great about that. Pretty exuberant Knight of Cups and you want to share that with the world. You just like want to shout it from the rooftops that life is amazing and you want everybody else to understand it. But this Knight of Cups in particular, like even among all other Knights of Cups in other decks, look, he's got a bubble around his head. So he's a little bit not with it. I mean, like a lot of bit not with it. Um, not seeing things clearly. He's got his head in the clouds. I mean, he literally has his head in the bubble. That should tell you right there. I have some personal experience with this Knight of Cups. It's worth mentioning here that I develop like really specific relationships with my cards, like with the different decks. And I, re I remember I, pu I pull cards like every day for myself, depending on the day I use a different deck. And I always pay attention to what energies come through that day. And on a couple occasions, I had this particular Knight of Cups come up. And sometimes me, sometimes somebody else, when they get this, when people get this card, it, it's like they're too much for everybody else. And it's, it's unfortunate because it's like, t if only everybody else could like resonate on this person's level. But th this Knight of Cups person is too, too happy, too excited, too full of love too much interested in sharing that with the world and it's like other people are just like wow you need to like slow down or like wow you know you shouldn't be that happy today today sucks or you know imagine you go on a date on your very first blind date and this person suddenly starts like professing their everlasting love to you that's this guy it's like wow like how could you possibly like what like too much too fast too soon like chill out <laughs> that's this guy and yeah, it's unfortunate because, like, too bad, too bad that, that that this Knight of Cups can't just bring his love out to the world and have everybody appreciate it. So, with this guy, you want to, you don't need to tune down your frequency at all. Like, hold, if you're feeling that much love and excitement and exuberance, like, hold that. You're doing everybody else a favor by holding that because that that's energetically helping us. We can, that, like, if you hold that frequency, we can tune ourselves to it. But be careful how you express it. You can still express it, but, you know, don't profess your love to somebody on the first date. Don't do that level of expression, right? Some things you need to keep under wraps just for a little bit or tone it down just a little bit because otherwise you'll be seen as going like way overboard. Yeah, central issue here, four of swords. Um, like, I see this as both you need to like tone it down like just a little bit and but also because other people are in, in recovery from something. You know, if you're professing your love on a first date, 
Well, those, or even if you're saying that, you know, oh, you know, I want to see you, see you again, right? Other people might be just coming out of a bad relationship or maybe they've been single for a long time and they need to take things slow because they're in some kind of recovery mode, right? They're not ready to like be charging into shit because over here, they're, wow, you can see just by the colors um, on these cards, uh, they are not like matching your frequency, which is fine, but this is why you're getting this reading so you can understand where they're at. This two of swords here, they have their head in the sand. They don't even know that they have choices. They don't see their options at all. Maybe feeling a little bit trapped. Um, maybe not. Maybe they're just blind and they don't know it. So they're not really in that great of a space. Head in the sand, right? Six of swords. Yeah, this comes back to that four of swords. They're healing. Wow. Like, yeah, swords. Um, these people are not feeling the love like you are with your knight of, so with your knight of cups. They're stuck in like a mental energy. Um, and they're going to be moving on from something. Um, the Six of Swords I see is really like hopeful for you. If you have like a particular like friend or romantic interest in mind that you're trying to cultivate a deeper relationship with, you're going to get that chance in the future because Six of Swords is they're going to be leaving their painful past behind. They're going through their recovery in their Four of Swords. Um, you know, eventually, you know, they don't keep their head in the sands forever. They're going to be coming out of it. It's going to be fine, but you need to give them a little bit of time to go through their, to go through their cycles, to process their processes, right? Knight of Cups. Um, yeah, I think if you can just chill out just a little bit, be there for them, definitely let them know how you're feeling, but don't expect them to match your frequency right now because they're, they're doing something else. They have a different like level of processing right now that they need to go through. I know your reading was pretty short and I was just looking at my decks trying to figure out if any oracle cards want to come out for you. Um, even maybe a different tarot deck, but nothing, nothing wants to talk to you. <laughs> There's nothing else to be said. So I think this was just meant to be a really concise, brief message. Very concise. So I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Hold your frequency, but don't overdo it and scare people. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Hope to see you again soon. All right, pile four, some pretty good stuff here for you. Your central central issue or central theme in this case, because ten, ten of Pentacles is never an issue, is the Ten of Pentacles. So you guys have a central energy of abundance, of comfort, and of wealth. Enough said, right? <laughs> Who doesn't like to see the Ten of pen Pentacles as as their central energy. Although with you guys, you might be like building this and I think you're building it with a soul, with a soulmate, romantic or platonic. It doesn't matter. Although I think for most of you, this is probably a romantic relationship because you got two of cups over here. The two of cups and the four of swords is symbolizing your energy. And the magician and the ace of cups is symbolizing this other person's energy. So two of cups and ace of cups, there's definitely like budding love here. And it is, feel they're feeling it from both sides i feel like this is like an introvert extrovert dynamic that you guys are probably holding the introvert energy in, a, in this relationship and the other person is the extrovert and i'm an introvert in a relationship with an extrovert and i know that that can be both challenging and frustrating but also the fucking best because you really then you have all of your bases covered right <laughs> you you're really the introvert and the extrovert are like the yin yang when, when they're together. And if you're, you know, otherwise calibrated properly for each other, it, it can be the best, but you need to be able to like to understand each other. And that is difficult. You need to go through a lot of like conversations and understanding the other person's perspective in that relationship. But you guys, I'm getting this like introvert vibe because two of cups, you are twining yourself with your soulmate, but you're also in this four of swords, like state of like fugue state of recovery. I think maybe you've known this person for a while, but, and you've been thinking about whether you want to get with them <laughs> um, and you're not quite sure yet, or maybe you're getting your, you recently gotten with them and you're kind of a little like freaked out about it. Um, so it's like, you need a little bit, you need a little bit of time, maybe a little bit of space. You need some space from your soulmate. I understand. I need space from my twin flame a lot of the time. <laughs> um, you need some space to, to chill out and process uh, this, this intertwining energy. And over here, they are much more like manifesting things on the outside. Like they're this magician with this globe in their hands and they're creating something. You know, I feel like they probably, 
um, tend to initiate things a little bit more. Yeah, like hands. Uh, this magician, you know, is manifesting this globe in their hands, and then this Ace of Cups is like literally this hand coming, <laughs> coming out of the water, presenting uh, somebody with a cup, with a chalice, with the waters of love, with the fountain of youth. I think if a little bit of time goes by for you guys, you will be able to come together, be the yin yang, intertwine your strengths. You'll be coming, you will become more aware of each other's weaknesses and then you'll be more, but you'll also be more aware of each other's strengths and how you complement each other. Um, you know, maybe one of you <laughs> is really introverted and prefers to stay home, but the other one likes to go out and party a lot. But, you know, and that seems like a conflict on the surface, but if you guys are can align with yourselves and with each other, then you can really work that out to the benefit of both. For example, you know, the introvert maybe secretly really, really wants to be able to go out and party, but they just don't know how to do that. You know, they don't know how to like even find where a house party is at. They don't, they've never been to a bar before even. Um, and so extrovert can come along and really take them out of their shell and help them um, have the adventures and have the fun and like drop their inhibitions the way they always wanted to. And at the same time, introvert can help extrovert uh, like find more satisfaction in their inner self and be more comfortable, you know, snuggling at home on a Friday night. I mean, I know that's all what we're doing right now. <laughs> so right, actually, if you guys are watching this right now, when we're all stuck in quarantine, um, extrovert is definitely having a harder time with that. <laughs> and, uh, you guys can step up and help the extrovert figure out how to be comfortable sitting at home, how, you know, they don't need to be worrying about the FOMA. They don't need to be running around manipulating their external environment. And I don't mean manipulation in a bad way. I mean, like using their environment to manifest pleasurable situations for everybody. You know, you, you might be able to demonstrate that, yeah, you can stay home, you know, have a glass of wine, put on some good music in the background and do a puzzle. And you can really show them how these close interpersonal, close, close, close interpersonal relationships can be much, much, much more satisfying than any amount of partying and meaningless sex. And yeah, this is all coming back to, you guys are building this 10 of pentacles. You're gonna be building your happy home. You're gonna be building your financial security and building your abundance. Yeah, you guys are all about pooling your strengths together to become greater than you could either be alone. Let's see what we got here with moon cards. And I wish my new decks would get here. <laughs> I feel like it's time actually time to like retire this moonology deck for a, a little bit. Um, but I need my new decks to get here, but obviously uh, it's the apocalypse and we all must make sacrifices. So here we are using this tired old deck again. <laughs> Don't let pride get in your way. Full moon in Leo. I think this actually applies to both of you. <laughs> um, since I get, you know, this different like introvert extrovert energy from both of you, you might be trying to insist that your way of being is better than the other one. I know this because, you know, my, my relationship dynamic is, is really, really introvert extrovert. And, you know, for a while there, you know, I kept trying to impose my ideal time on him and he kept trying to impose my ideal time on me, his ideal time on me. And, you know, each trying to insist, each trying to fight for what they thought like the optimum calibration should be. But no, there is no one proper way of being. Don't <laughs> don't let your pride get in the way. Don't be stubborn. Don't let those arguments like derail you. Like there could be like a little bit of an like power struggle dynamic where you just that other person is being so goddamn mule headed and they're just arguing for the sake of arguing. And now they're not going to back down because they don't want to be wrong. And this applies to you too. You're both doing it, right? It takes two people to tango guys. <laughs> um, so def there's a message here about when you see a fight coming, try to stop it. 
you know, like train dodge, guys. Dodge the train. Um, of course, if there is like a, a real, real issue that needs to be addressed, address it. But try to do that as calmly and as inoffensively as possible. You don't want to let those things fester. But a lot of couples can only like sort those things out by fighting. And I mean, if that's the only way to fight to sort it out, then then fight it out, I guess. But yeah, <laughs> full moon in Leo definitely like you might be trying to squish the other person. And I get it. We we all we all get like that. That's that's fine. This is like every relationship ever, right? But try just make the attempt. And the more you practice that, the more you practice de-escalating your romantic arguments, uh, the better you'll get at it. A win-win outcome is forecast. A full moon in Libra. I love that Libra came out because that is the perfect balance between yourself and other, like the, the other in this interpersonal relationship dynamic, right? The seventh house, Libra, is all about a balance with others, right? It opposes Aries, which is all about yourself, and Libra and the seventh house is all about partnerships. Partnerships, guys. If you can balance all of your shit properly with this other person, then, you know, like I said, greater than the sum of your parts, a win-win outcome is forecast. So don't let pride get in your way. Try to keep the balance, you know, channel that Libra energy, channel that justice, find the balance guys. And then you will be harvesting, bringing in your, wow, there's two cards here. <laughs> Luck is on your side. Luck is on your side. I mean, there you go. No more, no more to say about that. That's that was a nice sneaky little bonus message of good luck. Wow, I got I got even one more. Bottom of your deck. Bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. It's funny. I was just talking about retiring uh, this deck, and uh, I don't know. The deck was like, nope. I got I got lots to say. I got lots to say. I got four cards for you guys. So there you guys go. Um, I'm going to end it there. Love you guys. Hope to see you soon.